How's Avenue's red wine? I'm having my orange juice, California style. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys were on about uh, arriving in the States, or was it arriving in LA, LA. for the first time, yeah. and the impressions that it, was, it made on everybody? And Yeah. Yeah. So who wants to go first on that one to give us some insight? I did suggest LA for the first time. But for the life of me, I can't fucking remember the first time I went there. <laughs> was it with Vinegar Joe or was it with I Wishbone? Can. It must have been with Vinegar Joe. I don't even remember being there with Wishbone. <laughs> well, you were fucking dying. What I said? Uh, well, <laughs> me, me being a Why don't we talk was... about something that you can remember? <laughs> Well, Granny, Granny can remember as well. Yeah, we just, we just <laughs> for breakfast then. <laughs> my train spotting habits kicked in. I kept notes. I mean, I wrote down some basic stuff. I, I just remember we flew from Chicago to L.A. And I remember, how far is this fucking place? You know, you fly around in Europe. It's like a 30-minute, 40-minute flight. I'm, we're on this plane for like three, four fucking hours. I'm like... Where are we going? Anyway, and then we're coming in through the smog. You remember in the 70s, the smog was just like... A big layer of brown smog. It. The... It's not yeah. like that now. They've done a lot with catalytic converters. But I remember just coming in through the smog. And I remember I'd been in the States for about three or four weeks by now. I thought I'd got to know it a bit. But then California was so different. Oh, the heat. I got in, it was July. And, of course, we stayed at the Hyatt House, the Riot House on Sunset. Mm. You know, so you're getting your check and you heard all about Led Zeppelin riding their motorbikes up and down the corridor. So you're going to the hotel in Hollywood. I remember it being pretty exciting. Me and my mate James, we were just driving this little panel truck. We didn't have a lot of equipment. Steel I span, this was, by the way, the electric folk group. Very, <laughs> I don't know how we got gigs booked. It's such an unusual outfit. But uh, we check in the, the Hyatt house and I came down for breakfast the next morning. And there's this big Cadillac. You must have seen this, Gregory. The big Cadillac out front with the 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 long horn, the steer horns on the on the yeah, bonnet. Yeah, yeah. There's some Texas millionaire who used to come in for breakfast. All these kind of impressions, and you knew that Hollywood was just down the road. You know, and everything was very ex exaggerated. After I remember being in, being like, in. I remember being in the Hyatt House, uh, yeah. and I'm not sure who I was. It was probably with Wishbone, I think, because. Paul Rogers was there with Both that company, out. right? Yeah, and he's in the bar. He's in the bar, and he was pissed. And he come up to me and he went, "Mal, Mal, you're from Outley Pool, aren't you?" I went, "Yeah, Paul." He went, "Come on, then, let's have a fight." Yeah. <laughs> I said, "What do you mean? What do you mean, Paul? Come on, let's fucking have a fight. Let's fucking start a fight with somebody." <laughs> So we'll go out that experience with him. He was oh, all, yeah, that's Paul Rogers for you. <clears throat> yeah, he was all, every time I met him, he was like that. He was supposed to do, I think on that uh, Star Trucking tour, he was in, we'd done Orange in yeah, France. Yeah, yeah. The amphitheater. Yeah, he was, he was supposed to be on that the next day or something. And he was in the hotel. He punched, you know, Broke his wrist. He punched somebody the night before. Pissed. Broke his wrist. Couldn't do the gig. They cancelled. Yeah. You know, just. And I met him, and he met the fucking full Wilco. Believe me. But anyway, my first time in LA. Um, getting here in '75, going through New York and staying in New York for four months with the average white band, recording "Cut the Cake," and taking advantage of being number one with "Pick Up the Pieces." Um, you know, we started the tour. We, uh, we uh, started back east. We were working my way back west. I wasn't the tour manager. I was working with uh, Jack, uh, Phil Ashley. Roach, uh, Roach, Roach Clip, Clip. his name was. Roach Clip, yeah. Oh, this, this guy used to wake up every morning. About four <laughs> joints. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the time uh, we got to fucking L.A., Hamish's voice had gone. Right? Right. So Bruce, Bruce McCaskill goes, well, okay, Wilco, you're going to go and spend your time with uh, Phil 
and we're all going to be in the hotel. And I was just like really green. I'm going, oh, okay, whatever. So we go to Manhattan Beach and Phil, Phil actually walks in the house, gets into a huge argument with his girlfriend. They both walk out and leave me there with my suitcase. No car, don't know where the fuck I am, anything, right? So I'm sitting there for about an hour and this guy called Dave walks in. He goes, what are you doing in my house? I said, oh, I'm staying here with Phil Ashley. He goes, oh, okay, do you want a joint? And I was like, well, I might as well start smoking. That's what I first started smoking pot, you know. I was so fucking stoned for two weeks in this place. In that's LA. Where I met, in LA, that's where I met Don Boo. Who These was are all my beach best guys. Mate. This is down by the beach, so they're all stoners. Yeah, Manhattan Beach is by the beach. That's why it's Manhattan Beach. What? Never thought so, of that. you know, it was all phone calls back then. On a, on a non cell. So I got a call from Bruce. He goes, Hamish is okay. Come and get some per diems and some cash. We're, we're starting a tour again. And that was my introduction to the uh, the riot house. Right. I mean, I walked in. It was like, what band are you with? Do you want us to come upstairs with you? And I've talked about 40 chicks running around in all kinds of gear. Yeah, it was crazy. Those were the days. In fact, I... I fucking shit myself. Yeah, I checked in. I'd been like plowing my furrow, if you get my drift, all across the States. Because in the <laughs> 70s, English accent, you were like, you literally were fighting them off, weren't you? It was incredible, the accents, I guess. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I I'm going to the rainbow just for a drink. And I said to my mate James, I've been doing too much shagging. No matter happens, don't let me leave with anybody. I've got to be careful. And uh, five minutes in the rainbow, I'm like three women all over me. I'm like, hey, off we go, dude. Go ahead, here I go. Forget it. Forget everything I said. So it was just Hollywood, wasn't it? The sunsets. You were on the Sunset Strip, and you're not going to behave yourself. It was just. Right. I remember it was like the just. A, there's an atmosphere walking. You're with a band. It's the seventies. You got your fucking t rock and roll T-shirt. You're on your way to the rainbow. It was fucking brilliant. Oh, I mean, right, yeah. Loved it. Well, but the second are... time I went it was when the, uh, with the average writer so was the tour manager, and we said the Sunset Marquee, which I much preferred than the Ride House. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant, and that's when we had Skin Godenzi doing the sound. Well, and, explain uh, about the Sunset Marquee. It was more low key. The Sunset Marquee, wonder. I think, was more rock and roll than the Ride House. I mean, I don't know street. if anybody's been there the last ten years, but it's all been renovated has been for the last 20 years. And it's got all these great pictures up of all the rock and roll bands. And it was just more memorable having yeah. that suite. Last time I was in LA, that's where I stayed. Yeah. yeah, well, that's where I saw Pug. The last time I saw Pug, he called me up. He goes, I'm at the uh, Sunset Marquee. I'm, pop on over, you know. Pug, by the way, is the tour manager for Genesis and Phil Collins. And... Um, it was like the old rock and roll days. Checked into his room. As soon as I walked into his room, it was like, hello, shall we start? Hey. Yes, okay, let's start. You know, <laughs> I think I was there for two days. <laughs> but did, but what you gigs know, did you do in LA? What gigs did you do? Um, we played the Santa Monica Civic. Right. Soul Train. Um, uh, we did Soul Train. Remember coming to Soul Train? Oh, Santa Barbara. Um, um, and I was telling um, Mark Henry last night, Granny, when we first went to the um, Beverly Wilshire, and I was advancing, and the manager's going, you know, a rock and roll band here? I went, no, 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 we're accountants. And he goes, oh, okay, well, we don't like you rock and roll bands in our hotel. So I'm like, okay, we're we cool. So we get there, before, we, anyway, we get there, we check it in with a band, the average white band. And all of a sudden we hear, hey guys, come on in. We look in the bar and there's Ringo Starr bouncing off walls, you know. And it was like, hi Ringo, how you doing? We'll be right there, just checking in. And the manager's going, you're definitely not a rock and roll band. I went, no, nah, no. Nah. So all of a sudden the doors came smashing open and he's granny with the fucking, <laughs> with the flight cases. Hey, Ringo, what room are we putting the guitars at the amps in? My usual stuff. The man. The manager was like, out. And I was like, no, I'll throw him out. He goes, I'm not throwing him out. It's Ringo Starr. He's a Beatle. 
He's a Beatle. What the fuck is that about? Yeah, the, that, that, that was, was the Hotel. I didn't have time in, to see anything. That and the Beverly Hilton. The what? Uh, the, the Beverly Hilton and the, the, the Beverly Wilshire were the two premier hotels. They didn't want rock and roll trash. They'd take yeah. Ringo's money, but oh, they no. didn't want like, average rock and rollers. But, no, um, they didn't want to know us at all. But uh, You know, we uh, didn't do any gigs. Well, I I, had... Yeah, go on. I was just saying, we actually didn't do any gigs. Well, we did Santa Monica Civic. We came back. We were there doing television, which is really strange. Steel Eye Span and not very... I, I don't know how they got these... Organization Steel Ice Band was just for people who might not know them. It's not Steely Dan. A lot of Americans thought it was Steely Dan, and they came to the gigs thinking they were going to get like Ricky Don't Lose That Number. And you got like a bloke playing a dulcimer, another woman doing like that madrigals and 16th century plain song chants. <laughs> and so we did a we did a TV show, Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. And I remember, I remember being on yeah. the side of the stage, and I'm going, I'm really in America. It's one of those moments. The I've got a little list here. I wrote it down. The OJs, backstabbers. They were doing it. Yeah. Right. They had these yeah. bright yellow suits doing the moves. And then Jim Stafford. I don't like spiders and snakes. Remember that one? You might not know it. But <laughs> then the Hughes no, Corporation. No, 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 no. Hughes Corporation. They don't rock the boat. Rock the. It was very seventies. And then Rufus Wilco with Chaka Khan. So yeah. we were there. This was like all being filmed. Very like, compared to a BBC shoot, it was just really colourful and vibrant. You know, and I remember it was fan fantastic. I'm thinking we're really in America now. You're in Hollywood, and like driving down there, we had to go to Long Beach. I think it was in Long Beach Arena or something. They filmed it, and on the way we passed this little truck, and in the back of the truck was a model of a bloke, a little little model of a bloke with the top hat, and he had a big mallet, and he was. It was an exterminator company, and that was their visual thing for killing mice and rats. It was a Western exterminator. And I'm going like, like it's just a word you didn't hear in England, extermination. I just remember it stuck out. There's a little thing going down the freeway, and we see this thing in the back of a truck. What the hell's that? All too much. Well, it's all well, very visual, all signposts and billboards and traffic and heat. Fabulous. Well, on about L.A., I mean, and you'll agree with me on this one, Mr. Grange, I think one of the best gigs that we ever did in L.A. was the Palladium. Palladium. Yep. And we get there for sound check, and I've got Joe Cocker legless in a fucking limo, so I said limo. Um, I just told him, to, anyway, so we did the sound check. We're all backstage, and all of a sudden Atlantic Records arrives. Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross... Greg Allman and Cher, yeah, Marvin Gaye, the whole entourage. And the famous quote from our good friend Molly Duncan, when I finally got rid of everybody, and he opens up his door of his dressing room, he shouts, Wilco, no vodka, no horn player! <laughs> Slammed the door. So I, I run like a maniac to the front of the ba uh, stadium where the uh, bar was. I just went behind the bar, got a bottle of vodka, ran back, got him on stage, and the gig was just packed. I think it was like 3,000 people maybe, but it was just packed. Mm. So we always finished with, I had it through the grapevine. So <coughs> Hamish looked at me, I looked at him, and I ran upstairs, and I grabbed Marvin Gaye, and I brought him downstairs. And he was like, what do you want, Wilco? What do you want? I said, and all of a sudden it was like, ding, 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 ding. I, he goes, I don't know the lyrics. As I throw him on stage, the walls of the Palladium went boom, yeah. boom. I mean, the audience went absolutely ballistic. Have you got good photographs of that night, Mr. Grange? Oh, yeah. I mean, Hamish and Alan singing uh, Head to the Grape Band with Marvin Gaye. I mean, they couldn't believe it. That, yeah. You have to picture that place. It wasn't like a big, ugly arena. It was a bit like the Hammersmith Pally, like a dance floor. Yeah. It was really a good... Good venue, you know, it was really fun. Yeah. Shit to load in and out of, but I mean, that was the way that was. But it was a great warm gig, you know, and the balconies around, so people had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where the green so, room was upstairs. Yeah. We, no we had like, on our, this was our first tour, and I think they were just putting it together week by week. I, I didn't really get an itinerary. You landed in Boston and you just stay tuned. So we, were, we leave LA. <laughs> we, drove, we drove all the way to Seattle in this little truck. 
there was another another experience. You come out of LA, we were looking at the maps, which way should we go? So we better stick to the motorways, the freeways, and go up the I-5. Next thing you know, you're virtually in the desert. You say, what? In California, you go through desert, and then you come to like mountains and forests, up into Oregon. I'll never forget that first tour. It was just so and like mind expanding. Everything was bigger, better, mm -hmm. colorful. But then we, we did some gigs up in the northwest, Seattle, a couple of radio stations. I think we were just scrambling for work. I didn't give a shit. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't my career. I was just being a roadie. We come back down to Portland. We did a gig at Portland Civic Center or something. And at the end of the show, people said, how come we didn't play Ricky Don't Lose That Number? I really couldn't believe people thought it was Steely Dan. Then we came all the way back down to L.A. This time we flew. We did a gig at the Santa Monica Civic. And... Uh, Roger McGuinn from the Birds was like uh, the opening act. <laughs> but we'd been trying to find beer across country. Like I didn't drink real ale stuff, but we wanted like real beer. I like Carlsberg Special Brew. You couldn't get that in the States. People kept saying, when you go out west, when you get out west, they've got Coors. Coors is really the business, man. And you got it was like fucking piss. And we're doing the Santa Monica Civic. And the bloke said, oh, you're English. You might want to go around the corner to the King's Head. Was it? We couldn't get us out of there. It was like the nearest thing to an English pub we'd seen in the whole time we'd been in the country. And I still know the bloke, the owner. Turns out he was a, you won't believe this, guys. The owner of the King's Head used to be a fireman at Saltley Railway Shed in Birmingham. So he and I had a special bond there. So, yeah, I, I might, oh. my first the California, the LA, never thing. forget it. Another gear thing. Yeah, yeah well, you know, <laughs> this, um, this, <laughs> Oh, it takes a real so man. It takes a real man to fire a black five up the Licky Incline. I'll tell you. Every time. <laughs> so, Craigsy, you must have done some pretty big gigs in LA. Yeah. With your bands, I mean. Yeah, I've done. Uh, Not his first. I mean, time. memorable ones. Doing uh, the last gig I did in LA was with the Who, at uh, LA Ball. You know, I'd never done the ball. I'd never been in there before. Oh, Hollywood, Hollywood ball. ball. Yeah. That's yeah. it, Hollywood ball. Yeah. I'd done that with The Who, which was fantastic, you know. Yeah, great gig, great gig. Yeah, uh, done them all, done all the gigs there, yeah. I remember doing the one with uh, Phil Collins... At, uh, I forgot what it was called. It's probably called Schaefer Arena these days or something. I forgot what it was called then. Well, well the Greek was a good one to do. The Greek was a great uh, kid to do. Greek, oh, the Greek was good. I'd done the Greek with Peter Gabriel. Fantastic. Uh, but the, I remember doing this one in particular, and Phil used to finish with this song called Take Me Home. Take, take me home. Well, because I don't remember. It was a bit of a chorus thing. And the right. audience used to all sing along. But unknown to Phil, somebody walked on Stevie Wonder behind him, singing it, you know. And the house, like another thing, like Marvin Gaye walking on stage with AWB, oh, you know. The, it just brought the house down, you know. Stevie Wonder on stage with Phil Collins in the mid-80s. Sing and take me home, you know, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. 